most in from yeah. Myanmar? Food. Yeah, steak. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I, even though I'm happy, I'm not fully happy in Portugal. I don't feel like I'm, my feet is on the ground, you know, stable. Portuguese are very nice people. Yeah, I think Portugal really, really accept us with, uh, with very warm um, uh, heart, I think. I'm Zin. Hi, I'm Shine. Nice to meet you. I'm here in Portugal for almost three years. I came here in 2021 to study, but also, yeah, but also to meet my, at the time, my boyfriend and now my husband. So uh, that is the reason that I choose to come here to Portugal, to become a bit closer. And, and yeah, it has been really nice staying here in Portugal. It is a very safe country compared to other southern European countries. And, um, and also here, it is the life is not that difficult for a foreigner to live here without uh, speaking Portuguese. But also, but also people are nice and in Lisbon, it, it has a lot of uh, multinational people, so it is nice to have friends, go around and have fun. The weather is nice, more sun than in any other European country, so it is nice. I choose Portugal uh, because I got the Erasmus in 2015, so eight years ago. Uh, that's why uh, before I came here, I have no idea about Portugal except Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, but I love for football, so I know Portugal team and uh, the European uh, Portuguese uh, club success, uh, for example, in the Porto champion in Europe, U UFA. So this, these are the only information that I know before I came here. And then I came here uh, for my Erasmus and I did my Erasmus and I finished in the end of 2017 and I left Portugal in the beginning of 2018 and I live in Myanmar for three years and I decided to come back to Portugal in 2021 to continue my PhD and I'm currently doing my PhD in University of Lisbon uh, in the sustainable design uh, and also I'm working here in Portugal as a sustainability specialist um, so this is uh, my story so as I mentioned earlier I, I have a two uh, interval uh, time in Portugal. So first I live in Porto for almost three years and now I'm in Lisbon for three years. So I, I live both to, to the two biggest city in Portugal and I love both, uh, but uh, the two cities have a little bit different. So for example, in Porto, the weather is more gray and it uh, sometimes it makes me feel sad, even though the city is so beautiful and I love Porto and the Porto is one of the, I think one of the beautiful city in Europe and but Lisbon uh, is um, probably maybe it's more uh, fee, uh, fresh and more homes for me now because not only because of the weather and I, I'm from the capital I live in Yangon and I live very cent city center in Yangon so I like to s stay with a lot of people so Lisbon make me feeling the feelings it's, n it's not the same but I feel a little bit like in Yangon uh, for me that's why I also love Lisbon and I love Porto as well um, yeah, this is my story. And by the way, uh, I have one important news to share. It's about the recent. Uh, actually, last year I did voice over for one of the Portuguese films uh, that will be released next month in uh, in Cannes Festival in 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 France. Uh, this is the first movie that I know that this is the first movie uh, among the Portuguese movie that is now in the final list for the. Can festival, so it's a great success for the Portuguese film industries, and I I, I I contributed a little bit on the movie, so I'm a little bit uh, part of the movie, and and also the movie is about Myanmar, so I'm really happy with this because the movie is about the 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 1917 uh, Burma, so it's a little bit far away from the current time, but uh, uh, the director made some footage in Yangon, so I'm happy that. Uh, the Portuguese will see uh, some information about Myanmar because since I came here I talk with a lot of people and I have a lot of friends but most of them they have no idea about Myanmar so I think this is a great opportunity for me to say my friend that okay you should go to the cinema and watch the movie because this is, it's not about the movie is not fully about Myanmar but 
uh, there are some uh, some story is based in Yangon. Uh, especially, uh, so I'm really happy to say this. I see myself uh, living here permanently because now I have a family here, so I can see myself. But I think there may, might be a little bit of challenge for me because, first of all, I don't speak the language yet and I need to be more integrate the culture here because most of my friends that I know here, they are not, uh, most of them, they are not Portuguese. So if I want to live here, I need to be, know how they think, how they react, how they yeah, do things. So that's one of the challenge, but also other stuff like, like government stuff, uh, it's a bit, bureaucratic here so when you want to do something to be done it takes quite a while to do things it is a bit difficult for me and also another challenge is to be away from home like from from Myanmar it will be always a difficult thing because even even if I live here permanently the home homesickness won't never will never go away I will always miss Myanmar, I will always miss the people there and the weather, even if it is too hot, I will still <laughs> want to be there. And, um, and this time, Tinjan, it is water festival. I cannot even listen to the Tinjan sound because it makes me too sad. And I think the food and everything, the chaotic life of Southeast Asia, I, I still miss the most, even here it is very calm. So for me, and like Zin, I don't have family here. I am alone, so <laughs> I feel more homesick. <laughs> uh, even though I love uh, Portugal and I decided to come back, I still have a lot of connection because I still have my family in Yangon. And I, I have a lot of connection and a lot of friends. And, and I also think I still need to do something for Myanmar if I finish, after I finish my PhD. So probably I will go back to Myanmar um, but I'm still not sure. Uh, I love Portugal. Now Portugal is my second home. So uh, I'm still don't know. It's still, uh, I'm still thinking about this. But uh, at the same time, um, I think in living in Lisbon is, is not a big deal. Um, but on the at the same time, I face some challenges. As I as my friends mentioned earlier, in the the Portuguese system for the immigration is is a bit complex. So maybe it's also the same in for other countries. But it's a bit complex. So sometimes it take more time. And as she mentioned earlier, we have the issue with the language. So we understand a bit, but it's not enough to communicate in the government office. So this is the challenge. And another one is, uh, I like Lisbon, I like Portugal, but Portugal is also challenging with the health system. So sometimes if we have the health problem, it's hard to go to the hospital. <laughs> so <laughs> so this, is a, this is a challenge. And yeah, I think uh, personally, Portuguese are very nice and they are always helping me so I, I love with Portuguese and I think uh, Portuguese are one of the best people in Europe so I love Portuguese but uh, sometimes you know the people are nice I think it's like in Myanmar people are nice but we have a complex system so it's like in Portugal like Portuguese are very nice people and at the same time they also have some system failure <laughs> so yeah that's all <laughs> I miss Malashenko, I miss home cooked food, I miss Ngpie, <laughs> Tosia, like the, the vegetables. And I think I miss most the vegetables because here the, the choice of vegetables is very limited and there you like fruits and vegetables, you really, really have a lot. The and I'm, yeah, vegetables. yeah. And also the noodles, the an Indian food, you know, you should go to to downtown Yangon and should try some uh, chitti Indian restaurant and with this come with this big plate and I, I really miss it yeah for me uh, the first thing that I miss is like uh, in my family uh, I'm like my I have two sisters uh, both of them they love to eat breakfast uh, they love to eat bread for the breakfast but for me uh, I'm really Burmese in that way because I like to eat the fried rice for the breakfast and the noodle salad for the breakfast but 
So this is the most sick thing for me. When I wake up in 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 Europe, in Portugal, I cannot eat like this. If even even the lunch and the, the dinner, I eat rice, and my friend always complain me, Shine, why you always eat rice? <laughs> so if I if I have the breakfast, uh, it will be a it will be something different. Uh, but I, I really mix that fried rice uh, from our tea shop. Uh, we call it La Pei and in Myanmar, like in the evening time, also as a guide, we always go out with the, with other guys and we talk in the tea shop. Like it's a random topic, so I miss those type of t uh, the period, those time of time also. And another thing is, of course, the family uh, is the most important thing for me. Um, I lost my mom before I came here in 2021, but I still have my father and two sisters, so they are in priority for me. So they are the reason why I'm not, I, even though I'm happy, I'm not fully happy in Portugal because I don't have family here in Portugal. Uh, so I miss family and I miss uh, the food. For example, I really love the lapato, so tili salad. So I, in here, like, the other things, uh, if you find, maybe you can, you have the way to find. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are also, yeah, I cannot find. But uh, Lapad is, is the most challenging thing because uh, it's very unique Burmese food. So even though you go Chinese or the Indian, you can, you will never find the Lapad. So it's a big challenge. So last year I traveled to US and the first thing that I did is was like, I, I asked my aunts to bring a lot of the Lapad out and then I bring from US to Portugal uh, because I really love Le Pet. <laughs> it's easier to find in the uh, US. Uh, yeah, in US we have a, a big Burmese community, so it's easy to find. Yeah, But in Portugal, we have a very small community. We have uh, around 10 people, so it's very... Uh, and most are students, no? Most are students. Uh, so that's why, and we are the two living the <laughs> longest in Portugal. <laughs> yeah, Moprin also, yeah. Uh, so, so that's why maybe we maybe in the future we will open the Bami's restaurant <laughs> because Zini have more chance because she have uh, she has the wife uh, husband so maybe Portuguese and the the Bami's fusion restaurants. <laughs> I miss the time with friends. Our random top in the tea shop, because in Myanmar, like I think most Burmese uh, boys uh, do this. Like we always go out and we talk random topic. Sometimes it's about football. It's about uh, champion league. It's about Premier League. It's about the Asian football, or sometimes the some events in politics or others. But so I like this type of the random topic. I think in now today is less comment com compared with our father period because now we have internet so we have more chance to talk to each other but in the past this is the way that uh, all the things started from the tea shop all the things started from the tea shop like the good thing bad thing everything then sometime like uh, uh, like even the love story started from the tea shop no? <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think like right now, like everything I see here, I, whenever I see a scene that is, that reminds me of Myanmar, I miss home immediately. So right now, I kind of miss about everything. I, yeah, of course I miss my, my mom and, and also, I don't know, somehow like, I don't feel that relaxed here, like, I'm, I don't feel like I, my feet is on the ground, you know, stable, and not yet, so I also miss that part. I miss that chaotic life of life in, like, Leiden, like, you hear, like, at eight, like, people are already at home trying to have dinner, but in Leiden, like, at nine, like, the, some of the street vendors start opening up, and you have, a, like, really the street is full of people and and probably not now anymore but i, I miss those things and the street food and friends yeah i miss those things yeah the other thing that i really miss is the uh, pebble nambia uh yeah it's a pebble i think in here in the indian restaurant we can find nambia but it's a little bit different so i like more the burmese uh, version of Nambia is the flatbread that we have uh, we normally have with the beans bean salad it's like the uh, onions you know in in the in the tea house in normally in the breakfast time we eat also this the flatbread and also uh, with the bean salad 
and it's yeah I really miss this one because normally in, uh, for the breakfast is very important for me I, I like I always change in my menu for the breakfast sometimes this pebio uh, nambia sometimes uh, noodle salad uh, so I really miss especially uh, the most uh, thing that is challenging for me is it's not the lunch and dinner it's the breakfast uh, to be honest like I miss most of the breakfast most of the time in Portugal uh, I always miss the breakfast because for me having bread uh, and the egg and the European style breakfast I can have but not not every day <laughs> not for every day is too much for me <laughs> let me talk something about Portugal and the Portuguese so I feel one different things between the two two major city in Portugal is the people the people from the north they are more welcoming I feel like they are helping more you like uh, if you need help like they are always ready uh, but in in Lisbon is the the capital is one of the European capitals so people are more business minded so <laughs> I think it's not only Lisbon I think most of the the capital is like this so people always have the the full schedules and it's not easy to make the time with the friends but in Porto I feel in uh, that way is much better because people there is super super nice and of course in Lisbon I have a, a lot of good friends also but I feel like in Porto is more like more traditional Portuguese it, uh, the dishes is also a different because in Lisbon I think the is more international the food is more international even the if you go to the rest if even if you go to the this uh, Portuguese restaurants maybe you will see like the the workers are from outside but in Porto is more like the food and everything is like very uh, Portuguese um, but one thing I don't like in the northern Euro uh, in northern Portugal is like the it's a lot of mountains so if you take the the car I feel always easy and sometimes I vomit because the the, the elevation but in, in south uh, I, I have no problem with that so I'm happy with that <laughs> in Lisbon <laughs> Even in Myanmar, I think if you talk about Yang, people from Yangon and uh, the other city is different because uh, I always heard like my friend from Mandalay and other they always complain because uh, the people from Yangon they travel to other city and they ask friends to and then those native from those small town and the, the other towns like they take us and they bring all the famous places but when they come to <laughs> Yangon I, we have no time <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so it's happening in in Lisbon also I think like in Lisbon people always have the full schedule so it's not easy for them to arrange the time but uh, but the good side is like in Lisbon is more international so as uh, foreigners I am I have more flexible life in Lisbon because uh, more 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 foreigners so I don't feel really like uh, foreigners because people like me are always even though we have a very small Burmese community we have the people from our, our neighboring neighboring country like Thailand from China from India we have a lot of the neighboring people so I, I don't really feel like uh, foreign uh, in but in Porto is more Portuguese so in one way it's really good to learn about Portugal but on on the other side sometimes I feel more like a foreign. When I first arrived to Lisbon, uh, one of the things that m make me really feel amazed is the, how beautiful the beach here in Portugal. And this, the sea and the water, they are so beautiful. And it is also amazing how you can go to a lot of beaches just with like with a train in 30 minutes. That's also because where I lived before, you we always have to travel like for one night to to arrive to the sea, and then the water is very dirty for me, like very sandy, and that's the part that I find here very cool. And uh, but um, but um, yeah, every always going back to the food. <laughs> yeah, I miss seafood here, but yeah, I. Yeah, I think Portugal really, really accepts us with uh, with very warm um, uh, heart. I think one of the best thing for the Burmese uh, living in Portugal is uh, you can find rice easily, 
because rice is very important for us and th that was my concern before I came to Portugal in 2015 because I have little knowledge about Portugal so I don't know exactly like it's easy to find the rice here in, in Europe because I, I I watched the Hollywood, I watched the movies and we have a different culture so that time I have doubt but uh, as soon as I arrive here and I learned that like Portuguese also produce produce rice it's not only eating having rice they also produce a lot of rice so that's why i uh, i think that was when i see rice okay now i can survive i can live <laughs> because i've been to some european countries for the travel like france italy uh, uh, italy they have rice but it's a little bit different rice uh, in france it's too hard <laughs> to find the rice it's more bread so i i I'm really happy with this in portugal you can find rice easily and it's not expensive also no mm. It's around uh, in Burmese, maybe it's around five thousand for one kilo, so it's not that expensive. Uh, if compared with uh, because rice one kilo, you, you you can have a lot of, but the bread uh, one point five two euro, you can have only like one day. <laughs> but rice maybe you can have like one week uh, or less than one week, uh, at least five days uh, if you can have. So it's really good. So I think uh, for the Burmese, if you come to Portugal, I think you have rice. So because rice is our staple food, and Burmese can survive if you have if we have rice. So I think uh, this is the most important thing. We don't ask each other like, do you have breakfast or do you have lunch? We ask like, yeah. means have you eaten rice? Yeah. <laughs> Literally that thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I explained this to my friend, and they were so surprised. Are you crazy? Why are you asking like you have you yeah, eaten rice? Yeah, this is our our. Yeah, uh, because the meal in Burmese literally means rice. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> tamin. Yeah. Yeah, tamin. Yeah. So we ask each other like tamin sabi bila. Yeah. We don't ask like uh, do you have breakfast? Do you have lunch? Yeah. Rice is the most important thing for us, and we have rice in Portugal. And also, I forgot to mention. Uh, I think this is important. I just I just realized, and we uh, I tried to make some research about the 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 Portuguese word that have the similarity with Burmese. So we have some in in the beginning. I have no idea that we have some similarities, but I, in the end, I found a lot of words that have the similarities. For example, sal, we call sa, is the salt uh, that we put on the rice. In Portugal, they call also sal. So it's really like the same and also uh, other similar things like uh, uh, in in Burmese uh, we call a po a poa but in, in if we write we write it's like abo a boa and Portuguese is uh, avo uh, a, avo 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 so it's a very similar one and also like uh, uh, we call veranda uh, is a balcony in Portuguese is also the uh, veranda Mons la in Portuguese is lua is also a similar one and yeah I, there are a lot of similarities I, now I'm I'm a little bit confused I forgot but there are some words uh, so it's it's nice uh, even though we have a completely different uh, origin of language we have some similarities uh, so it's nice uh, it's good. Uh, but uh, studying Portuguese is uh, quite challenging for us, especially if you have no idea with the Roman language, it's quite challenging for us. Uh, maybe for Zin it's more easy because she can speak a little bit in Italian also. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for us, like it's completely different. Uh, and I, I don't know if, with Zin, but for me, the most challenging part with the language is the you always have feminino and masculino. It's the the in Myanmar we call aposagalo and amazagalo because in Myanmar we don't really have that. We have only one word and you can use for both. Uh, for example, uh, in Portugal you always changing the the grammar uh, and the, the, even the the palavras, even the word because uh, it's the feminino, masculino, and, and the adjective, adverb you always change also based on the the, the, the nouns, right? So this is the main challenge uh, for studies. And even the pronoun you always change. For example, in even in English it's easy, it's, a, it's his or her, right? But uh, in here sometimes you use uh, uh, dela, dele, uh, ella, ele. You always change the adjective and adverb based on the, the noun, right? <laughs> so this is the challenge. But I think uh, Burmese people, 
because uh, I was uh, I really I, I'm the fan of the Manchester United so I, I really support you the Cristiano Ronaldo since I was like in the uh, in the middle school so uh, I, I, I know also a lot of the uh, Ronaldo fan in Myanmar so a lot of people have no idea about uh, Portugal but they love Portug Portugal and sometimes they support also Portugal in the football team football match because of the Ronaldo so I think uh, to the Burmese people I want to say that uh, like Ronaldo Portuguese are super nice Ronaldo is the best example he is of course sometimes he is aggressive he is uh, very competitive but <laughs> but in natural I think he is a nice person like he always helping the people outside the in the conflict area, conflict area, so the Portuguese are also like this. So and and compare with Portuguese and other European, I don't want to judge other European, but I think Portuguese are one of the nice people uh, in 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 the Western Europe. Yeah. And and I would like to say uh, my friend from Myanmar, so uh, be strong for everything and success. Thank you. <laughs>